In this lecture, you'll learn about thin provisioning for SAN protocols. You can thin or thick provision the LUN in the volume, as well as thin or thick provisioning the volume in the aggregate. You'll also learn about the fractional reserve, why we need it, and how it works. When using a SAN protocol, it's best practice to pick one of these options, either a one-to-one -one relationship between a LUN and a volume, meaning when you create a LUN, you have a volume specifically dedicated for that LUN and nothing else, or a one-to-one -one relationship between a LUN and a Q tree with multiple Q trees in the same volume. So there, when you create a LUN, you have a Q tree dedicated just for that LUN with nothing else in it, but you can have multiple LUNs in Q trees in the same volume. Now, the reason that you would have multiple LUNs and Q trees in the same volume, or the reason why this used to be done fairly regularly was for deduplication. So if you had a lot of LUNs which had similar information in there that could be deduplicated, because deduplication worked at the volume level, it would be a good idea to put all those LUNs in the same volume. And when you did that, you would put each one in its own dedicated Q tree. But now in the later versions of ONTAP, we can do deduplication across different volumes in the same aggregate. So now you can go with having a one-to-one -one relationship between the LUN and the volume. If you want to have deduplication, put those LUNs in the same aggregate, and then that way you still get the deduplication. And it's just easier for administration if you have that one-to-one -one relationship between the LUN and the volume. So that is what is typically done. And again, the only data in the volume or the Q tree should be the LUN and its associated data such as snapshots. So don't mix any other data into that volume or Q tree that you've got the LUN in. And similar to volume thick and thin provisioning in the aggregate, LUNs can also be space reserved or non-space reserved in the volume. So space reserved basically means that the LUN is thick provisioned and non-space reserved means that the LUN is thin provisioned. The command for doing this at the command line is LUN modify and then the field you want to use is dash space dash reserve and either enabled to thick provision the LUN or disabled to thin provision the LUN. When a LUN is space reserved and its volume is thick provisioned, so both the LUN and the volume are thick provisioned, that is the default, the LUN is guaranteed its space in the volume and the volume is guaranteed its space in the aggregate. Other objects in the volume, which could be other LUNs, if you've got multiple LUNs in different Q trees in the same volume, or files, which you shouldn't do, but you can do, or snapshot copies, etc., cannot use that space. So the space is reserved for the LUN. When a LUN is non-space re reserved, so thin provisioned, and its volume is thick provisioned, space is allocated to the LUN as needed, provided free space is available in the volume. This allows you to over provision the volume. So when you have got a thick provisioned volume and you've got thin provisioned LUNs in there, let's say that the volume is size one terabyte, you could have four 500 gigabyte LUNs in there. So you can actually provision more space to your LUNs than is available in the volume. And when a LUN is space reserved and its volume is thin provisioned, the LUN behaves the same as a non-space reserved LUN. That's because the volume has no space to allocate to the LUN because it is thin provisioned. It can only allocate space as it is written to. Now, you might be thinking, if I've got that one-to-one -one relationship between the volume and the LUN, why do I need to thick provision the LUN? Because the LUN is the only thing in the volume. It's not competing with anything else for that space. Well, that would be true if there were no other objects in the volume. If there were no other objects in the volume, then there really wouldn't be any point in configuring thick provisioning for the LUN because the volume provisioning setting would control whether the LUN was guaranteed physical space in the aggregate or not. But 
there might be multiple lungs in the volume. If you've got lungs assigned to a Q3 and there's multiple lungs in Q3s in that same volume, then all those lungs are contending for the same space in the volume. So the lung provisioning setting is going to have an effect. And also even more likely is there's probably going to be snapshots in the volume and the snapshots are taking up space in that volume as well. So if you thick provision the LUN, it means that the LUN is guaranteed that space and that the snapshots cannot eat into it. When a LUN is space reserved and its volume is thick provisioned, which is the default, then the LUN is guaranteed its space. When data is first written to the LUN, there is guaranteed to be space for it but we can still run into an issue here. If snapshots are being taken, which they probably will be, when blocks are overwritten or deleted, they will be locked in the snapshot and take up additional space in the volume. That's just the way that snapshots work. Whenever we delete a file or we overwrite a file, well, that's locked in the snapshot and that's when the snapshot is going to lock those blocks and start to take up space. Now, overwrites can fail when we're using a LUN because they would cause the volume to become full even when the LUN is space reserved and its volume is thick provisioned. So even if you do have a space reserved LUN and a thick provisioned volume, you can still end up with writes failing. So let's explain how that can happen. So let's say that we have got a one terabyte volume and in that volume, we create a 500 gigabyte LUN and they're both thick provisioned then we write 400 gigabytes to that one of data and then we take a snapshot of that one of the volume well when we take a snapshot when we first take the snapshot the size of the snapshot is zero because it's not locking any blocks that have been changed in the volume yet and then let's say that we've got 400 gigabytes of other data that we also write to the volume. That could be another LUN or it could be files, although we should not be writing files to that same volume. Then we overwrite 400 gigabytes worth of data in the LUN. So we're writing new data, we're editing those files that are in the LUN. So we've got 400 gigabyte overwrite. Well, when that happens, the old 400 gigabytes is going to take up space in the snapshot because it's locking those blocks. Well, if you look now, we've got 400 gigabytes worth of data in the LUN. We've got 400 gigabytes of other data in the volume. And when we do this, the snapshot would take up 400 gigabytes of space. Well, that's 1.2 terabytes and we've only got a one terabyte volume. So that doesn't fit, it's not gonna go so the overwrite will actually fail. So you can see there it happening that even when we've got thick provisioned volume and a thick provisioned LUN, overwrites can fail. So the first writes to the LUN are always going to be successful, but it's still possible that overwrites can fail. So we have got a fix for this, which is the fractional reserve setting. Fractional reserve, also known as LUN overwrite reserve, enables you to reserve space for snapshot copy overwrites for LUNs when all other space in the volume is used. The fractional reserve must be configured to either zero or 100%, not a value in between. So it's either basically on or off, enabled or disabled. And if you're wondering, well, why do I set it to zero or 100%? Why don't I either just enable it or disable it? The reason is that in previous versions of ONTAP, you could set it to a value between zero and 100%. So the actual command for configuring is still configured as a percent, but in the latest versions of ONTAP now, it does have to be zero or 100. The fractional reserve is set at the volume level, not at the LUN level. And if it's set to 100%, whenever a snapshot is taken, its maximum potential size is reserved in the volume. If it's set to 0%, then it's not. So let's see how this works now. Same example again, we've got a one terabyte volume. We create a 500 gigabyte LUN in the volume and they're both thick provisioned. We write our 400 gigabytes worth of data into the LUN and the, we then take a snapshot. When we take a snapshot, works the same way as snapshots always do. When we first take it, the size is zero because we don't have any blocks that are locked there yet. 
Now, when we take that snapshot, even though the snapshot hasn't grown in size yet, the maximum potential size of that particular snapshot would be 400 gigabytes because that's how much data was in the LAN in the volume when we took that snapshot. So when the fractional reserve is enabled set to 100%, whenever you create a snapshot, the maximum possible size that that snapshot could grow to is reserved in the volume, can't be used by anything else. So now we could write other data to that same volume, but we'd be limited to 200 gigabytes. We can't write any more than that because of the fractional reserve. Then we do our 400 gigabytes overwrite again. And because we have got that space reserved for the snapshot, the snapshot can grow to its size of 400 gigabytes. The snapshot will grow to 400 gigabytes because those blocks that were in place when the snapshot was taken has changed now. So they are going to be used in the snapshot. So you see that our overwrite does work. So by enabling the fractional reserve, it makes sure that overwrites are always going to work. We could then go and write another 300 gigabytes worth of data to the LAN, again, overwriting that data. That will work just fine as well. The snapshot is a point in time snapshot of what was in the file system at the time we took the snapshot. It's read only, so nothing changes. We can still do another overwrite. That snapshot stays the same. But if we then try to take another snapshot, well, we've got 300 gigabytes worth of new data. If we were to take a snapshot too, then that would reserve 300 gigabytes of space in the volume. 300 gigabytes is not available, so that snapshot will not be able to be taken. So when you enable the fractional reserve, that makes sure that you can always write to the active file system of the LUN, but it doesn't make sure that you can take another snapshot. But Obviously, being able to actually write to the LAN is more important than being able to take snapshots. Okay, let's talk about sizing this. So the 100% fractional reserve is not generally recommended because it requires significant additional space. But if I just go back a slide again, you see if we were going to, if we just took two snapshots there after we'd written 700 gigabytes of data to the volume, we would need to reserve 700 gigabytes of space just for the snapshots. So you can see that this does take up a lot of additional space in the volume. So it's not generally recommended because of that. Snapshot auto delete and optionally volume auto grow is the preferred method to prevent overwrites failing due to the volume becoming full. So again, I'll go back a slide here and rather than enabling fractional reserve, when we had that snapshot and we wanted to do overwrites, well, that's going to cause the volume to grow. And if we didn't have auto grow enabled or snapshot auto delete enabled, then it was going to fail. You saw that in the first example. But if we do have snapshot auto delete enabled, when we try to send overwrites to the LAN, what it will do is it will just delete the oldest snapshot as the volume is getting full, and then we'll still be able to do the overwrites. And that does not require us to reserve all that extra space for the snapshots in the volume. So that's generally the preferred way to do it is rather than enabling the fractional reserve is to enable snapshot auto delete and optionally auto volume auto grow as well. No matter how you configure thick or thin provisioning, space reservations and fractional reserve on your volume and your LUN, you still need to size the volumes correctly to contain all data, including a full snapshot rotation. So if you're doing daily snapshots and you're keeping them for a week, figure out how much space that is going to take up. Also figure out how much space is required for the LUN, add those together, and you need to size your volume to that size. So what these different settings do is they allow you to obtain optimized space efficiency. So it allows you to optimize everything while minimizing the risks of volumes or aggregates becoming full, but you should still size everything correctly in the first place. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp Storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.